Hey everybody, welcome to Ocean News Update. My name is Andrew Lewin. Let's get into today's story. The vaquita is going to be the subject of today's update. Now the vaquita is an elusive, shy animal that's found in the Sea of Cortez. It's actually only found in the Sea of Cortez. Now the vaquita has dominated the news over the past couple of weeks because of its population size. In the 1990s, the population size was probably around 600 animals. Now it's probably about 30 with 19 reproductive females. So you're probably wondering what happened to the vaquita population. This is what happened. It's all about a fish called the totoalba. Now the totoalba is a pretty large fish that's sought after for its swim bladder. Apparently in China the totoalba swim bladder actually has a medicinal use, which hasn't been proven by science by the way. Regardless, there's quite a high demand in China for this swim bladder, which fetches a pretty extravagant price, which makes it really attractive for fishers to catch the totoalba, get the swim bladder, and ship it to China. Now the way the totoalba is actually caught is using gill nets. Now gill nets is not a very good way of catching fish for a specific targeted species because it catches everything and that becomes a huge problem. And in that problem is the vaquita. The vaquita has been known to get caught in those gill nets, drown, and die off and that's why the population has dwindled so much. So this has been going on since the mid-1990s, almost 30 years in the making. And scientists, conservationists, were screaming at the high end of their lungs that this has to stop. This fishery has to stop, but it didn't. As usual, it fell on deaf political ears. However, because the population has dwindled so much, nowadays, there's been a lot of hype and the politicians are trying to get into the Mexican government are trying to stop this and they've taken some action to do so. A few years ago, the Mexican government put a two year temporary ban on gill net use. You couldn't use the gill nets in the water, but you were allowed to store them and actually have them. So it was very difficult to police whether the gill nets were being used or not. So after the two years were up for the gill net ban, the Mexican government put in a permanent gill net ban, which is great. But again, enforcement was difficult because these fishers were actually fishing at night for the totoalba, which again caused the vaquita population to dwindle. Now, the enforcement's always a difficult thing to police at sea. The Mexican government used the Navy. They even partnered with Sea Shepherd to bring in their boats to actually try and stop and deter people from fishing at night, fishing in remote spots where these vaquita actually live. But as you can see, because of the population continuing to dwindle, their efforts were futile. So with an estimated population of 30 vaquitas individuals left, the Mexican government took what people say was a last ditch effort and formed a team so that they could actually catch the vaquitas individuals, put them in a sea pen that was in the water, that was in the Sea of Cortez, and keep them there to protect them from getting caught in a gill net. Problem is, vaquitas have never been held in captivity. In fact, we don't know much about the vaquitas at all. We don't know about their physiology. We don't know really about what they eat, how much they eat. We don't really know about the, the relationship with calf and mother. It's, it's a very complicated process. And without knowing these things, it's difficult to take care of a vaquita in the pen. But regardless, they went through with the plan. They formed a group called the Vaquita CPR, Conservation Protection and Restoration. It was a team made up of veterinary scientists, marine mammal scientists, um, all these different people who were involved in captivity all over the world, basically experts around the world to bring in. They brought in the best and brightest that they could to bring on this team to get the vaquita caught and protected. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. And there were a few problems with the way they were doing it. The first problem, the first problem is they used dolphins, Navy trained dolphins to actually catch the vaquita. So the dolphins would be trained to look for the vaquita, chase them into a net, they caught them in the net and they would actually bring them up to the surface and then try and transfer them into the pen as quickly as possible. That was a problem. The second is that, we, like I mentioned, we don't know much about the vaquita. They had to monitor for health to make sure that it was doing well. So the project wasn't really the best thing for the vaquita, but again, it was a last ditch effort. Two vaquitas were caught, both never kept in captivity for very long. The first was a six month old calf that was probably separated from its mother as it got caught. Vaquita CPR caught the six month old calf, put it in the pen, realized it was a six month old calf, realized that it wasn't doing well health wise and released it three hours later in the same place that they caught it with the hopes that it would reconnect with its mother. According to some scientists, there was a high probability that this vaquita would actually find its mother because it, the habitat was so small. The second individual was a reproductive female. They caught the female, put it in the sea pen, and unfortunately, a few hours later, it died. And along with that death, the Vaquita CPR program died. Now, a lot of people criticized the program, saying that captivity wasn't the answer, but they understood that it was a last ditch effort. But captivity really isn't the way we should go about this. The question is now, though, what do we do? What do we do now that that was our last ditch effort? We tried to protect them. 
how do we protect the vaquita? And unfortunately, some scientists and some conservationists say that it might be too late. Normally in these situations when you're trying to protect a delicate and endemic species like the vaquita, you have to put in long-term programs. You have to educate not only the fishing community, but you have to ed educate the end users, the people in China who are using these medicinal swim bladders for their own purposes, not realizing the effect that they have on the vaquita populations in the Sea of Cortez. Unfortunately, these projects, these education projects take forever. There are long-term projects where education takes a while to turn people and to make the people aware of the effect that they're having on an endemic population. Now, the Chinese people are notorious for using medicinal uses for seals, for rhinos, for elephants, all these different parts, and it's become a huge problem around the world. However, with the shark fin issue, there have been some changes in the way the Chinese people view shark fin soup. Education programs are finally starting to work and we're seeing an actual reduction, even though the reduction number is a bit controversial we're seeing an actual reduction in people consuming shark fin soup, which hopefully will reflect more on the reduction for the demand for shark fin soup and the reduction in shark finning in general. So the programs work, but they take some time. They take lots of time. When you're trying to make aware a population that's over a billion people that could potentially use these swim bladders or use any other parts of animals that are endangered, you have a problem. Time is not on your side. And unfortunately right now, time is not on our side. So education programs still need to be put in place to try and save this vaquita. And even though it's a last ditch effort, we still need to make that effort. We still need to protect this, this animal from extinction. And we need to learn from the mistakes that we made. We, politicians need to understand that these issues need to be addressed right at the beginning of the problem. Once the issue is made aware, Politicians need to step in and try and do something because these problems do take time to rectify. We've seen animals come back from the brink of extinction before, but it takes time and it takes an international effort to put this system into place. So anyway, I want to know how you feel about this story. Let me know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to stay updated on everything that's happening in the ocean. Here from us at Speak Up For Blue, I want to thank you for listening and happy conservation.